It's Tuesday, January 26th, and the time for your Bobby List TV morning news update. Residents across the Caribbean may have previously been lulled into a false sense of security when it came to the COVID-19 pandemic. That's according to Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Joy St. John, as regional countries record more COVID-19-related deaths and the spike in cases, as well as new variants of the virus. Emmanuel Joseph picks up the story. While refraining from pointing fingers at any particular country, Dr. St. John said several countries had let their guard down, particularly with regard to the tourism sector. The former chief medical officer in Barbados, now based at the Carver headquarters in Trinidad and Tobago, questioned whether the measures in that sector were maintained throughout while governments sought to balance lives with livelihoods. Are those measures in place all the time? Because COVID just needs a little chink in your armor and it's in. So not necessarily have the measures for safe return to tourism being applied. I think people were lulled into a false sense of security because earlier in the 2020 year, people would have done things and gotten away with it. And so some of the, the measures for safe return to tourism were not properly applied. Dr. St. John said while well, regional governments would not be given a failing grade for their management of the pandemic, they still cannot be marked as excellent. She said this is because of the surge in COVID cases in recent months, primarily due to the re-entry of visitors into the region. The senior public health official warned the governments that their response to the uptick in cases of the virus was critical, advising them to pay careful attention to their health systems. We do not want to overwhelm the health services, and it's not just because it's the sector that I come from, but it is also the sector that supports the well-being and development of the whole country. If the health services are overwhelmed, it is difficult to maintain economic activity. People will be sick. Um, people will be out because of quarantine. So we, we have to measure our response at this critical juncture so we do not have a situation of spread that is out of control. Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Joyce St. John, and I am Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. While businesses whose employees test positive for COVID-19 are not being forced to close their doors, in some instances they have no choice but to do so. That's according to President of the Barbados Private Sector Association, Ed Clark, who said that this was especially the case when a small business was affected. His comments come just days after the head of the COVID-19 monitoring unit, Ronald Chapman, made it clear that the unit did not instruct businesses to close once a staff member tested positive for COVID-19. It depends on the size of the business. Um, if you have a small business and somebody in a, in a one, one, one or two room business uh, house and, and somebody in there has COVID, you really don't have a choice. You have to shut down some the business and test everybody because there, there's, there's been uh, much more contact than to a large business where uh, a segment of business may be in a annex building or in an office somewhere. So it's a different, a different um, strokes with different force depending on the size of the businesses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what he's trying to say is that I'm not saying a large business has to shut down because somebody in the office has COVID. Mm -hmm. But what the management of that business needs to know how did that individual interact with other people across the business? Whether it could be somebody that has to interact with a number of departments on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a judgment call and did this person come into contact with so many people on a regular basis before we got back the results? And, and then make a judgment call. And you have employees who, who want their interests protected, they're, they're scared, and nobody wants to have COVID. And you have to listen to your employees and make sure you protect the health for your employees as well. So the businesses are doing what they deem to be necessary at this point. Um, they're trying to follow all the protocols as much as we possibly can at this point. Um, and I think that business houses and barbers in general have done a very good job. In other news, 
The father of four-year-old Sky Greenwich is thanking the public for the overwhelming show of support shown to his daughter as she battles dengue fever. Romel Greenwich told Barbados today that his daughter is currently at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital's Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. Up to the time of speaking with Barbados today, Greenwich said that Sky was still on the sedation after undergoing a procedure to mend a ruptured vein. The minor was also awaiting a second blood transfusion, which prompted the public appeal for donations to the blood bank. I reached out to some of my friends in my school group, my work colleague, his family, my family, and I had an overwhelming, tremendous response from everybody. People that I obviously don't know everybody, they came out, they called, they asked people for my number, their prayers, thoughts, words, everything, I thank you. I thank everybody for it because um, we are all caught up with the COVID situation. But we all live in Barbados and we are hearing once here, once there, somebody's dying from dengue. And I don't think in my mind, Beijing's are taking it that serious or the authorities should at least make it a little more known. We do have a dengue problem in Barbados. Um, we need to keep the surroundings clean, try our best to do these things because it's not just my daughter, it could be anybody else, it could be anybody's mother, father, sister, daughter, whatever. And what I'm going through, her mother, our family, her friends, it is not a good situation. It is, I've never experienced anything like this with any of my two daughters. And, you know, as a parent, you would like to take the pain away. You can't, obviously, you can only do so much. But to see your daughter in a situation like this, helpless, is, is not a good feeling. Public service vehicle operators are being warned against engaging in practices that hinder the flow of traffic in the Warren's St. Michael area. It's coming from Minister of Transport, Works and Water Resources, Ian Gooding Edgel, who pointed to the use of the bus stop and lay-by facilities next to the Eunice Gibson Polyclinic. Gooding Edgel, who visited the area with other officials last week, Following complaints by members of the public said they observed that the lay-by was not properly being used by peers fees and an order has been made for a transport inspector to be placed in the area to police the worrying trend and ensure an improvement of traffic flow. We want to encourage the PSVs, associations, um, the owners and the operators to cooperate with us because we cannot have the traffic backing up at critical junctions and we can't have um, issues of health and safety um, being put at risk um, because of what we're experiencing. If you, if you look to my right, if you look to your right, you will see what I'm referring to. You know what I'm saying? We have this situation. So we want to encourage them. Um, if, if and, I, and I have the confidence uh, that they will respond positively, the operators of TAP, they drop off and they pick up. The transport board, they drop off and they pick up. So we're basically appealing to the PSVs to follow suit and, and help us, uh, especially in this particular area. There's regional and international news after this short break. from the region, Guyana's foreign minister has issued a protest note firmly condemning the illegal detention of the captains and crews of two Guyanese registered fishing vessels in Venezuela. And officials are also demanding that they be released. More in this report from News Source, Guyana. The government of Guyana is looking for answers and wants the vessels and their crew released by Venezuela. The interception and detention of the fishing vessels Lady Nayera and Sea Wolf took place last Thursday. 
In a statement over the weekend, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said the vessels were operating off the coast of Waini, within Guyana's exclusive economic zone, when they were intercepted by a Venezuelan naval ship. According to the statement from the Foreign Affairs Ministry of Guyana, the captains of the two Guyanese fishing vessels were instructed to chart a course to Port Goria in Venezuela, where the boats and crew have since been detained. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has indicated that it is currently seeking to ascertain the status and welfare of the crew members. The Foreign Affairs Minister met this afternoon with the owners of the two vessels. The government of Guyana has condemned the action by the Venezuelan Navy and said the Venezuelan Navy vessel was illegally maneuvering within Guyana's exclusive economic zone when it intercepted, boarded and commandeered the Guyanese fishing vessels. And finally, the latest International Labour Organization report shows tentative signs of recovery are emerging in global labour markets following unprecedented disruption in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the new annual estimates in the seventh edition of the ILO Monitor COVID-19 and the World of Work, 8.8% of the global working hours were lost during last year, which is equivalent to 255 million full-time jobs. ILO Director General Guy Ryder said this is approximately four times greater than the number lost during the 2009. Big hit, almost as big as 8.3% this time, uh, to labor income. So the damage is enormous. Uh, unevenly distributed between regions, and between different uh, sectors of the workforce, and generally the most vulnerable, the hardest hit. And then we're looking forward to 2021 and the perspectives for recovery. I think we've all started this new year in the hope, maybe expectation, that things are going to get better. We lay out three scenario of recovery for 2021, baseline, optimistic, pessimistic. Uh, perhaps the bad news in all of this is, even on the most optimistic assumptions, we're not going to get back to the starting point. We're not going to recover all of the jobs and working time that have been lost. And the point we try to make in all of this is how well we do depends very much on the policies that we adopt. Obviously, the trajectory going forward of the pandemic matters enormously, but we do need to put in place policies for a human-centered recovery. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.